The women's liberation movement was a movement that sought to define women on their own terms, not those of men and society. Through their work, strides were made to lessen inequality between men and women, ensure fundamental rights, and give women their own voice. The women's liberation movement originated around the 1960s, hot on the heels of the civil rights movement, which many of the women now advocating for their own rights had participated in. The broad aim of the women's liberation movement was to gain equality for women and allow them control of their own lives. Within these broad goals, more specific goals sprang up, like universal access to reproductive health care, the right to equal treatment in the workplace, and the breakdown of traditional gender roles. In achieving these goals, women for the most part fell into two separate categories. The first was the reformers, usually older women who organized themselves into democratic organizations such as the National Organization for Women. This group focused their activism on legal and economic issues, especially focusing on women in the workplace. The second group was the radical group, composed almost entirely of women under 30, young housewives, and college students, who operated independently and were much more concerned with reproductive rights and gender roles. Despite their differences, the two groups learned to work together to forward their cause. Of these causes, one of the most important was access to reproductive health care, notably abortion. The road to abortion started long before Roe v. Wade. One of the largest demonstrations centered on abortion occurred in 1969, four years before Roe v. Wade made it to the Supreme Court. This was the Abortion Speakout, hosted by a radical feminist group called Red Stockings in New York City. The event showcased women speaking freely about their own experience with abortion, in direct contrast to the government, which had only allowed men to speak on the issue. In the same year, Jane Clinics began to offer services to women in the Chicago area, encompassing anything from counseling to performing illegal abortions. It is estimated that upwards of 11,000 illegal abortions were performed by this group between 1969 and 1973, in the interest of allowing safe and easy access to what they considered a fundamental right for women. All this came to head in Roe v. Wade, which secured a woman's right to an abortion thanks to the right to privacy clause in the 14th Amendment. For the women's movement, this marked a huge legislative step forward, as well as a social one, as abortion not only became legal, but also became less taboo. Thanks to the efforts of feminists, the ruling of Roe v. Wade still stands, alibi controversially, and continues to guarantee access for any woman to an abortion. Outside the arena of health, women also campaigned within the field of the workplace. Women were somewhat successful in the field of tightening the wage gap. Women made 60 cents on a man's dollar throughout the 70s, but the figure eventually rose to hover around 75 cents to a man's dollar. Social stigma surrounding women in the workforce also lessened dramatically, and by 1970, 47% of women were in the workforce, as opposed to less than 40 in the 60s. This represented a powerful social change, as women were able to define themselves not just as mothers and caregivers, but as working people, independent in their own right. These two dual changes still affect women today. 76% of women had entered the workforce by 2000 thanks to the way paved by early feminists, and although a woman still earns only about 75 cents to the dollar, awareness of this issue has gone up enormously, and it is still a matter of contention and positive change today. Perhaps the greatest challenge that faced and still faces the women's movement has been securing the legal equality through the Equal Rights Amendment. The Equal Rights Amendment has only three sections, the first requiring equality of rights under the law, without any bias on the basis of sex, the second allowing the government the power to enforce the amendment, and the third allowing for the amendment to take effect two years after ratification. Despite its simplicity, the Equal Rights Amendment has a tortured history at the very best. It first passed Congress in 1972, and despite marches, protests in the Senate, and extra time allowed for the ratification of the amendment, it still failed to be ratified by the necessary number of states. The amendment was reintroduced in 1982, and has gone before Congress at every session from 1982 to the present day. Today. 
women's rights advocates, known as the third wave of feminism, still lobby for the Equal Rights Amendment and seek to get it ratified in the remaining states. Despite this ongoing struggle, the women's liberation movement provided and still provides women with greater access to health care, a greater sense of equality, and a sense of ownership of their own identities as women and as people.